Hi everyone, Squintina here and today I'm going to go over how to customize your World of Warcraft controller setup to be very, very similar to Final Fantasy XIV's. For those who are not aware, Blizzard added some native support for controller in World of Warcraft and I have a video review of that. It's a decent starting point, but it definitely is missing a few things. However, that is why add-ons exist, so here's what we're going to need. First, we'll need console port. It will allow us to have pretty icons for our buttons and have quality of life fixes for all the things Blizzard did not put in, like handling ground targeted AoEs better and being able to use the D-pad for going through your inventory. Next up, we have Bartender 4, which will allow us to move our hotbars around and set up our custom bar highlighting and also allow us to use the next add-on, which is Mask. And that just makes the hotbar look nicer. The last add-on that is required for this setup is Move Anything, which will let us move things around beyond what Bartender already allows. There are also some optional add-ons that I'm going to recommend, specifically Immersion. It just makes quests look and feel nicer on controller, but it's not required at all. Next up, you're going to want something for your UI. This guide is mostly about your hotbar setup, your cross hotbar, as we call it in Final Fantasy XIV, and not so much about things like changing your party, you know, frames or anything like that. What I'm using is Guild Wars 2 UI. It's just because it was nice and easy to set up, and it mostly, except for a few things, does not conflict with console port. Um, but you can absolutely use whatever else you need to make the UI look much, much nicer. However, do keep in mind that for some reason, LVUI, which is extremely popular, has a lot of conflicts with console port. Um, so maybe you want to try setting things up first and then install LVUI and hope that things don't break and then work from there. Otherwise, maybe look into something else. Alright, so let's make sure my add-ons are enabled, bartender, console port. I am going to keep the action bar for the time being, but I will not be using it for the setup. The reason I will allow it to remain is so that if you do decide to use action bar, you won't have to completely redo the entire setup all over. Alright, so the very first time you load up console port, it's going to automatically enable uh, gamepad support and it's going to ask you for your device. I'm going to be using a PlayStation 4 controller for this video. And this is going to ask you if you want to use the default key bindings that the person who created the add-on has made. I will not be using those, but you know what, let's say okay. So we've got a shift, control, and alt. Shift is going to be our left trigger. Control is going to be our right trigger. And alt is going to be our left shoulder. We don't need escape. We really don't. And we're going to keep these for the time being, but I'm going to change the right mouse button to right shoulder. If you end up making a binding and you change your mind, so let's say I put options, which is forward, and I change my mind, you can just right click and it removes it. Continue. So the setup is going to have a cursor in the middle. I do recommend using it and you can tell it if you want to hide it upon a jump. I don't like that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, this is whether to hide the cursor upon stick input and also how it um, changes back if you do have it back in regular mode rather than centered mode. I'm going to leave it at both. 0 0.6 is the default. I like 0 0.55. I don't need to change these. You can read them. Face movement. Yes. Give me that sweet, sweet legacy control. Alright, so this is the default setup that 
comes with, but I will be changing pretty much everything in here. I'm going to go to bindings, and I'm just going to remove everything. Action bar. So now I've cleaned everything up, and we're going to start putting things in there. We're going to start with action page 1. Page 1 and page 2 are technically speaking the same bindings, and they can be switched from one to the other using, you know, a, a toggle. This is not something I've exper experimented with yet, so if I do at some point explore it, it will be much later. But essentially, it could allow doing the quick switch that Final Fantasy XIV players do when they just press their right bumper, but only to one bar, I think. Um, yeah. So we're going to put this with the right modifier. The reason why we do write modifier is because in Final Fantasy XIV, and it's been a while since I've been low level, um, but I do recall that when you earn new actions, they automatically start from the right to the left when it places them on your hotbars, and so that would kind of do that for you as well. And the reason why we do it this way, where we start from here, it's very important you have these, especially these first three, is because those will be your vehicle actions. So sometimes you'll be in special vehicles for quests, and it will be forced to the first three of the regular keyboard hotbar, which is what this is right here. But, for the sake of making a certain step we're going to do later easier, we're going to do it differently for the left modifier and for the combined modifier. So we're going to start here with the left modifier, triangle, square, circle, X. This order is very important. Alright, so now we have these bound. Let's save. But we need to be able to see them. Now sure, you could use the um, controller UI that comes with console port. It is slightly different than what Final Fantasy XIV has. It's still very good though. Um, so if you want to try it out, I do recommend it. But if you want a truly Final Fantasy XIV setup, what we're going to have to do is disable it. But that means we need to make our own version of a cross hotbar. So we're going to open up Bartender. And what I would say, assuming you're going to follow the entire guide, is for each bar from 1 to 10, make your padding 6, and make your rows 4. And your buttons should be maxed out, 12. You can ignore bar 2, but everything else. Making padding 6. Rows 4. You can also type it if you don't want to use the slider, so just 4, enter. You have to press enter for it to take, and just repeat that. Okay. 
Okay, now we're going to press lock and you can see the bars. So let's just move them to make it easier to find them. That's 7, 8, 9, 10. And bar one, where'd it go? There it is. Right here. And once again, we don't need bar two. Maybe in the future I might do something for bar two, but for right now it's ignored. Regarding the other settings, um, that's up to you. I would say move the extra action bar over here. Uh, it's actually this. The reason it doesn't seem to match up is because I'm using a different... Um, UI add-on called Guild Wars 2 UI, and it's actually overriding it, in part. Um, but I can still tell it, hey, hide the art artwork. But the actual location, I have a different add-on that's doing that. But if you don't, you can move this out of the way. You're free to move whatever else you want out. Okay, so now we're almost ready to start. Let's put lock back on. And because I have nothing, my bars they completely disappear. You also don't see any of the bindings that I put in. But we do have things, so what I would recommend is open up your actions and put some things in there. And when you do that, you can actually see where the buttons are that we've already laid out. And put it in every single one of them. Maybe do different actions for different modifiers, because that will make it much easier. And I'm realizing I forgot to undo something. Just put them wherever you see them. If it doesn't quite match up to what you see right now, that's fine. Just make sure that you have the same stuff for whatever says L2. I need to actually undo the changes I have here so I can show you how to do those. <laughs> so let me fix that real quick and I'll resume the video. Okay, I've fixed up my settings to be like what you would probably see, which is this. So the reason why I had you do them spaced in console port, you know, was to actually create this shape. If you do every other, and you have a rose in part tender of four, it creates a nice, easy, kind of controller looking shape. But we don't have enough space to actually do it for all of them, so we need to use move anything to kind of fix that. So first, open up Bartender again. And we're just going to put this right next to each other. And for the first one, which is going to be completely messed up, in comparison at least, we're going to also put it right next. So this is the order it should kind of be in. Then, open up your keybinds. Go to add-ons. And put something for move, frame, exact. I'm using forward slash. So we're going to start over here, grab this 
you know, D-pad up and bring it to the equivalent on the face button, which is triangle. So that's why we put them next to each other, so you can use this as a guide. And the reason why I wanted you to fill everything out is because that makes it really easy to line up and make it nearly perfect. Do make sure you have the correct, you know, direction. Depending on the order you do them in, you might end up dragging more than one. Just use the move anything key on whichever one you did not want to drag, and that will separate them. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. Seal like this. That's fine. I'm just gonna move it down so I can remember the order. This one is up. This one was right. Left. And down. Type in reload. Open up Bartender again. Unlock. And you'll see that now at least bar 6 looks nice and beautiful. Let's fix up bar 5 first and then we can tackle on bar 1 after. Repeat. So to handle bar 1, we're going to use move anything to kind of move them out of the way now. We can leave this one alone, it's fine. And just kind of estimate it for the time being. doing reload you can just uh, hit them again with the move anything button but that could interfere with it so use up bartender Pretty close, but not quite right. So just be very careful when you use the button, make sure you're on the thing that you want to grab. Just fix it up. And that's why it's good to have different icons, so you can kind of tell which one you're on. So we've got our L2 right here, our R2, and our left and right together, also known as our expanded. So 
So that means now we need to be able to use those and see them light up. Now in Final Fantasy XIV, they actually get bigger. In this case, we can't really do that, but what we can change is how bright they are. So that's what we're going to do. So on bar one, we're going to go to visibility. Make sure this is not put in. You want it completely empty right here. But you can put in a fade out alpha. I'm going to use 65%. And then this is our R2. I'm going to put in a custom condition. So make sure you click this in, put in a condition, accept. I'm going to have these in the description, don't worry. But what it says is, uh, if you're in a pet battle hide, I may change that later. If you have control and shift together, which means you actually want to use this bar and not that bar, hide. If you have either alt, um, which right now we're not really doing alt, but uh, essentially it will be our, our L1, which is the Final Fantasy targeting button or shift, which is L2, then fade. And if you don't have any modifier pressed, also fade. We're going to do a similar one for bar six. Do make sure you hit accept. It's so easy to forget. I don't know how many times I've messed that up. And so now, if I press L2, it lights up, R2, it lights up. Both of them together, they disappear. So I need to now take this expanded and bring it down. I also need to make sure it's hidden when we aren't using it. So it's bar five. And once again, visibility. We don't need the fade out actually, but we do need the custom condition. And so what that says is that if we have all three modifiers pressed, we hide it. Um, for reasons we'll cover later. But if we have both of the L2 and R2 modifiers, we show it, otherwise keep hiding it. And so sure enough, now it shows up. We just need to fix where it is located. Let me move this a little bit. Going to bring it down right over here. Then I'm just going to match them like this and like that. Slightly higher than it should be. There we go. Lock and good to go. Beautiful. If you need to change what's on the bar over here, just keep it pressed while you drag. You know, just figure out how to put your buttons. Or I suppose you could simply hide the other ones, disable the custom condition, fix up your bar, and then re-enable things. So a simple disable this. Disable that, disable this, and now you can edit it very easily. And then when you're done, you just re-enable the things you took away. Oh, 
And I feel like there's something I forgot, and there is. Let's say I took this away. Now it disappears, and we kind of want it to stay. So for this, we're going to open up Mask. Go to Bartender. And there are many masks you can use. You can find other ones um, through the add-on list. But the one that comes with it, that does the job that we need it to do, is zoomed. Just do this, and why is it not doing it? Oh yes, because in addition to that, you also need to enable the button grid. For bar 1, to hide the extra keybinds, you can just uh, reduce the amount of buttons just for this bar to 8. And that will be very, very close. The reason you have to do button grid is uh, so we can show it. But the reason you need to mask is because if you don't have mask, it will literally show the entire border. To show what it would look like without mask, this is what it would look like if you had the grid, but you weren't using it. Which as you can see for the one that's not uh, bar 1, and the only reason bar 1 looks nice is because we had to move each button one by one, and we can actually uh, shorten it. But in this one, we actually spaced them so that we could use it as a template, and so we have these empty buttons, and that just looks ugly. But by using the zoomed mask, it still keeps the icon while hiding these ugly, not used squares right here. Okay, so that takes care of the actions you can use, what we see in Final Fantasy XIV's cross hotbar. But we still have to cover things like targeting, 